got a picture of who God is, of uh, what God looks like, and how he operates through a study of his name that will reveal both his nature and his character. I want to suggest to you that God's name, and it, it, incidentally, uh, I would highly recommend to you uh, a book that's entitled All of the Names and titles of God in the Bible by Herbert Lockyer. It's an old classic, uh, well worth uh, the investment of uh, both your resources uh, and your time. Now, please understand this. There are more than 357 names and titles a God in the Bible. Now you, you, you would wonder, well, wait a minute, why so many names? Why so many titles? Well, I ask the question about so few. Because when you come to understand who this awesome God is and understand both his nature uh, and his character, listen to me, there is no one man that can fully describe him. Listen, people. God is who he is. God is not his name. Let me run that back again. See, God is who he is. God is not his name. And I, and, and I hope I can get to at least two of those 357 here uh, on today. Uh, I want to introduce you to his introductory name. His introductory name is Elohim. You don't need to write any of this stuff down. You really don't. Uh, because it's all there uh, for you. God, uh, Elohim is his introductory name. Now watch this. Jehovah is his personal name. Yeah. Did you know that God had a personal name? His personal name is Yahweh. We translate that into Egypt. And, and it comes out to be uh, Jehovah. And, and when I get to it, uh, that name, well, let me just do it right now. Uh, that name was so sacred that, uh, that the rabbis and the scribes would even pronounce it. That name was so sacred that even when the scribes were, were writing it and copying down the scriptures. Whenever they got to the name Jehovah or Yahweh, they would pick up a new pen, write the name, and then put the pen down. Yeah, I, I wish I had a church in this house. <laughs> this is also why. In the Ten Commandments, God had a command not to use his name. How? In vain. Watch this. That's how much God honors his name. And, 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 and oh, I've been preaching on this since January. All right? It's April now. All right? Only sermon I've been preaching is, is the power and the majesty of God's name. And, 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 and one, of the, one of the opening terms, uh, I try to suggest uh, to our people that uh, we use God's name in such a flippant kind of way. And God said, no, no, no. You, you need to know who you're dealing with. You know, the new thing now is OMG. For no reason at all. OMG. Uh, and, and when I, when I put it on the screen one Sunday, you know, uh, one of the ladies came to me and said, Well, you know, Brother Barclay, uh, you know, you said OMG means oh my God. Uh, but you know, it can't mean oh my goodness. I said, Let me ask you something. When you use it, what do you mean? Uh, she said, I confess. All of us ought to confess. You don't play around. God's name. You don't use it in a flippant kind of way. God honors and reveres his 
name so much that he placed a command against his flippant, vain use of his name. Now remember, God is who he is. God has a personal name. That name is Jehovah. We'll explain more about that uh, in, 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 in the hour. I want you to watch this. Uh, My given name is Richard Lee Barclay. And I have to tell you, when uh, the preachers introduced me, they introduced me as Brother Broccoli. You know, church folk called me Brother Broccoli. And I have to remind them, I'm not a listener. <laughs> it's, it's Richard Lee Barclay. Now, that's my name. Now, and I'm going to show you in a second. We do with nicknames. I'm kind of getting ahead of the sentence. Uh, let me just keep the stuff structured here. Like we have it for me. All right. Watch this. God's names are clues to give us insight into his nature. It's not just about nomenclature or pronunciation, but insight into who he is. Goal number three is to help us to understand that these transforming names of God will transform both our nature and our life. And then finally, to increase our knowledge of God and deepen our experiences with Him. Now, we will use His name as an entry point to achieve that goal, keeping in mind that God's names are significant because they are connected to him. Now, the first thing I want you to see is that big old hello banner uh, uh, on your outline there. Names are important because they carry both, watch this, weight and meaning, especially when it comes to God. If you can see the screen, look who's on it. Oh, you're looking at your paper. You see Bill Gates, don't you? Does that name carry weight in me? Yeah. Especially if you need a little something. <laughs> what about uh, Serena Williams, athletically? Uh, in tennis, uh, you want to play a whole lot of football, but you really don't want to run up against sister <laughs> unless you show up, got your tennis game together. This basketball player, Michael Jordan, we're in his city. Uh, there's a statue of him in front of the United Building uh, downtown Chicago. Uh, he's been out of basketball for what, 10 years? Yeah, longer than that? Uh, but, but watch this. He's still setting shoes. Uh -huh. I know. I just bought him about a month ago. All right? Uh, underwear? I'm going to stay with shoes. All right? <laughs> Keep this thing spiritual and on a high level. Amen. Alright? Now what's it? Uh, uh, his name matters. Uh, my sport, uh, right? We're all watching him this weekend uh, to see whether or not his short game has improved. And he's going to get back on the road uh, to uh, uh, winning another major golf championship. Whether you like him or not, he is still one of the world's most intimidating athletes on the golf course. This name matters. That name matters to me. That is the President of the United States of America. Whether you like him or not, that's a bad boy. He is, uh, because of the position he holds in the United States as our President, and he is our president. Uh, and, and we always, and whoever the president is, I tell our church all the time, please pray for him. Yeah. I'll pray for her. Me, uh, uh, in a year or two. Uh, he is the most powerful man in this world. Because of the position he holds. And whoever holds that position has that same level of power. Yes. And folks, listen, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that has happened, not just within the last 
past eight years. Uh, uh, you know, he, he has certainly been maligned and mistreated. Uh, but, but something started uh, relative to the nation's respect for Alita mm -hmm. during the Nixon administration. Mm -hmm. And it has continued to escalate. Now, 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 Mr. Obama has received some treatment that, 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 that is, it has been unusually ugly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, he's standing in his own house talking to the nation when uh, some, some fool. That's what you're describing. Uh, as a basketball player, uh, 
named Magic Johnson. Uh, the fella can do some stuff. He could be looking one way, throw the ball another way, never miss a beat. Uh, he was magic with uh, on the basketball court. Therefore, he gets the nickname, though his name is Irvin Johnson, uh, we have thrown magic in there. Uh, how many times have you, uh, you know anybody ever been called Ray? Mm -hmm. What about that? Mm -hmm. uh, and every family got an Uncle Bobo in <laughs> we, we have a guy not sure named Bobo. No, no, I'm sorry, his name is not Bobo, his nickname is Bobo. But everybody called him Bobo. Uh, I just buried a nephew uh, in Texas a few weeks ago, and uh, uh, his nickname is Bobo. See, see, everybody we got an Uncle Bobo, uh, and I don't know what makes him Bobo. Uh, but uh, oftentimes they, they're a little crazy. Uh, and uh, you don't want to hang around too long at the family reunion. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you want to keep your kids from. Uh, what's in there? What's in there? What's in there? Psalms 8 1 says. It says, O oh Lord, our Lord. Look how the first Lord is spared. All what? Yeah. All capitals. Look how the second Lord is spared. Capital L. Small case. Whatever you say, Lord. Some stuff to gain some women. Yes. 
Last year after the lecture shift, I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, you need to take some of it off. <laughs> uh, I got high blood pressure now. So, so, so listen, uh, 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 I, I, you know, she said, uh, well, listen, you can stand to lose about 15 points. Uh, well, when I was 13, I was trying to gain 15 yeah. uh, So, So my sisters and folks called me, they called me Finn Man, and then they called me uh, Little Richard. Uh, my sons called me Pops. Uh, church folk to my face <laughs> refers to me as relationally Brother Barclay. Uh, when my wife wants money, she calls me my <laughs> The government don't even respect me. They don't call me by my name. They give me a number. 453 278 1190. And the number has been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> and that, that, that number ain't going to work nowhere, right? At least not in regards to me. And so watch this. Because of the situations we find ourselves in and the relationships that our names are different. Watch this. God's the same way. God's the same way. And I, and I really want to get to this introductory name of these. All right? Watch this. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent. And the word there really is, how majestic is thy name in all the earth. Now, watch this. God, first of all, is majestic in his power. There are three things I want to suggest to you that I think the church needs to get back to in relationship to God. We need to know something about the majesty of God. Amen. I think we have dumbed it down. Yeah. We need to know something about the holiness of God. I think we've become too irreverent. And I think we need to know something about the honor of God. God is to be honored. Yes. He is not to slave. Yes. And we have lost something. When, when, at least in my judgment, when it comes to the majesty of who God uh, is all about. Majesty is a word which the Bible uses to express the thought of the greatness of God, our maker and our Lord. When we ascribe greatness to someone, we are acknowledging greatness in that person and voicing our respect for it. Just as we would speak of the Queen of England, Her Majesty, the Queen, our Mr. President that I've already referred to. Uh, uh, he, yeah, I understand why people call him Obama, just like I understand why people call uh, Mr. Bush, Mr. Bush, but please, he is to be respected. Even if you don't like him, we must never get to the place in this country where we disrespect the office of the President of the United States of America. He is the only one in the nation that the nation selects. The nation doesn't select them. States do that. The nation does not select representatives. Districts do that. He is the only one in the nation that the population said, we want you to lead us. Mm -hmm. Now, we may not agree with the stuff you're saying, mm -hmm. but we want you to lead us. And as Christians, the like, Bible tells us, we are grateful. Mm -hmm. And you're all grateful. Yes. All right, now watch this. Let's look at the holiness of God. The term holiness means uniqueness and separateness and a partness. God wants his name to be held in a unique position that it might occupy a special place in all of our lives. Ain't nobody else like him. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. Excuse the grammar. Ain't nobody else like him. He is separate. He is a part. He is unique from anything else out there. Right. And he wants, he wants us, his people, to hold him in that kind of reverence. Now I want you to watch this. 
so much so that we were taught to pray, Hallowed be thy name. Pray then like this, Jesus says, Our Father, where? In heaven. What? Your name is separate, unique, and apart from any other. I want you to watch this, friend. I tell our church all the time, uh, God is everybody's God. Y'all don't know what to say. Yeah. See, God's everybody's God. Yeah. But he's not everybody's God. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. Even to the atheist, yeah. he's still that God. Yeah. 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 Rain song uh, looks like I, I think. Guess who got it? Yeah. Just a yeah. just. See, see there, are, there are benefits that everybody receives from God. Yeah. But there are special benefits yeah. that his children yeah. receive. Right. Because we're in the Alright. Uh, I was at a funeral one time and, and, and I, I made the statement that some of our folks, some of our members got hit up. Uh, and I had to explain it just real quick. And I simply said, everybody's going to heaven. Everybody going to heaven. I said, y'all want this. Uh, here's the problem. Everybody wants to stay there. Yeah. <laughs> But the Bible said, you know, we shall all appear for the judgment seat of God. So everybody's going. <laughs> but everybody will say. Yeah. Look, look, you all not just want a quick visit. Okay. <laughs> you ought to want to go and stay. But in order to go and stay. You're going to have to be right with God. Watch this. And it's power. And Jesus as Lord and Savior. All right? Now watch this. Hallowed means to set apart, unique, or sacred. There are three kinds of dishes in my house. Three kinds. I got three kinds of dishes in my house. Uh, number one, there are profane dishes in my house. And this is that very all right. Wife just ain't got around to watch them. I ain't got around to watch them. Uh, and so there are profane dishes in our house. All right. Then there are common dishes in our house. All right. We use them on a daily basis. And then there's a third category of dish in the house. It's holy. It's rare. In fact, as my wife said back there, uh, she doesn't even call it a dish. She doesn't even call it a dish. She calls it child. All right. Now, we were we were married 43 years ago. This past March 17th. All right. And and some of her mother's friends, because we, you know we married, we both still in God. We uh, we 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 didn't have a dad between us. Uh, we were living love and broke. Uh, and, uh, you know, she, she, she put some stuff, I don't know, she put it in there, I don't know what she did. Uh, but her mother's friend uh, went down and bought dishes, uh, bought, I'm sorry, china for us. And we've had it for the three years. We've had it 43 years. You would at least think that in the 43 years we've had it, I would have eaten out of it, eaten from it, at least 43 times. Come on, let's, the reality is less than half that number. Uh, see, it's rare. It's holy. It's separate. It's unique. Let, let me tell you how separate it is. She doesn't even keep it. Well, the profane and the common. <laughs> <laughs> and I see some of these other ladies that get doing this right here. 
That chamber has its own room. <laughs> Not only does it have its own room, it has its own cabin. Uh, that cabin has a light in it. <laughs> that cabin is under lock and key. Like, 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 I'm going to be breaking glass <laughs> to get in it.
about something with that passage with that passage that we've never had to. You know, we, we got this little, or we are not called our virtual reverence right. because of, uh, you know, that's God's name. Mm -hmm. Then why do we call each other holy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's his name, too. Mm -hmm. See, here's his, his, his quote. Uh, you, you, you don't have this slide. I put this one in. You may want to write this one down. Uh, there's a primary rule of interpretation in sales. Uh, my New Testament professor back in the late 70s at Gordon Conrad Theological Seminary outside of Boston, Massachusetts, was Dr. Gordon Field. And uh, he's written a book, an old big copy of it, uh, by Field Stewart. How to read the Bible all is worth. It's well worth reading on the uh, Dr. Field was real particular about a statement I'm about to make where he would always tell us a text cannot be what it never be. <laughs> a text cannot be what it never be. Now I understand the double nature of prophecy. I, I really do. But, but watch this. And the Holy Spirit has a right to interpret the text in a way the Holy Spirit chooses to interpret since the Holy Spirit wrote it. Right. That ain't, ain't arguing with that book. At the time, David penned the song. You didn't have denominational preachers. <laughs> and the reason you didn't have denominational preachers is because you didn't have denominational churches. Denomination did not exist at that time. He's not trying to tell us about what you should or should not call some, some, some clergy person. He's trying to get us to understand that our God is reverent. He is to be revered. And that means he's awesome. Holy and awesome. Why does he say that? When I did this in our congregation, uh, there are a, lot of, a lot of our folk didn't even know. Now since this is Psalm 111 and verse number 9, logic said, well, if this verse 9 there are eight verses that precede this verse. Amen. And we run to verse 9 to draw a conclusion that was never intended by the writer while at the same time missing what the writer intended. Now, I don't call these men reverend. I don't call these women reverend. I don't do that. See, something can be true to the Bible but not true to a particular text. Did you, did you understand what I, what I mean by that? <laughs> see, 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 there are some other references in the Bible that, that would say to me, you ought not do that. And I don't do that. But this ain't the text. This ain't the text. Uh, a friend of mine, Frank Florence, says, that William Jones says the same thing, he's not, he's not doing preaching here, uh, that, that when you take a text, out of his con text, you become a con. We got some spiritual con artists. And con is short for convict. And convicts ought to be locked up. <laughs> and friends, that's some stuff that we teach that, that some of us ought to be locked up for. You see, a text can never mean what it never meant. Psalms 127, verse number 1. Except the Lord build the house, the labor and the things that fill it. Except the Lord keep sitting the watchman and wait for man. That's the church. Well, it never meant that. Yeah, I'm glad just, just go home and read the next verse. I, I tell, you know, I tell my, uh, uh, you know, I teach hermeneutics, and, and I tell my students, look, just read the next verse. Or read the previous verse. Mm. Don't, don't draw a conclusion on one text out of this setting, and that setting is called context. You got to know something about historical context. You got to know something about literary context. Uh, you need to know something about cultural context. Uh, how many of you have seen that, that, that movie, uh, Childhood Movie the Wizard of Oz? Yeah. You've all seen it, right? Nice little story about Dorothy Toto. 
How's those stuff? What's behind the stuff? See, if you don't know, if you haven't read the book by Frank Baum, having read what's going on in the culture and in society of the United States of America, you will miss the intent of this nice little what we thought was childhood stuff. How many of you saw Denzel's movie, uh, uh, John Key? Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Oh, what a wonderful, hot, touching story. Mm -hmm. But unless you understood what was going on in the culture, that the Affordable Care Act addressed, yes, you missed the story. Mm -hmm. See, we get so caught up in who there was so hard touching? What's behind? We always have to ask ourselves that when it comes to the Bible. I just finished lecturing in Jackson, Mississippi last week, and uh, one of the things I said to them was, the Bible was written 